Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English and today we are talking about vocabulary. Now, since the beginning of time, since the beginning of English, when it was created, one of the most important elements of English is your vocabulary. Now, everyone says that, but guys, it's actually true. If you look at the most important question in English language, which is question five, which is writing a story, a speech, a letter, an article, to get a grade eight or a grade nine, you must do language devices, you must do punctuation, you must do structure and so on. But there's one criteria that comes up three times in the top band mark scheme, and that is ambitious vocabulary. Ambitious vocabulary basically means you have to use really, really big words in your writing. However, when it comes to vocabulary, there's a fine line between being sophisticated and just sounding like a little bit of a strange weirdo. What do I mean? You get some students who think big words mean using words like, I don't know, discombobulated and supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Those are long words, but they're not sophisticated words. The trick when it comes to learning vocabulary is learning vocabulary that can seamlessly fit in your writing. We've all been there guys, we've all tried to use certain words that don't really fit with our writing. They stand out like a sore thumb, they look off, they look weird. But then there's other vocabulary that are ambitious, that are big, but they fit in perfectly. Now in this video guys, I'm going to give you 10. 10 ambitious words, 10 big words that you can use for any piece of writing that you do. And these are the 10 that you can use the entire year. Every mock exam you do, every assessment you do, even when you get to your GCSE exams, just use these 10, it's more than enough. So for example, if we're doing a story or a speech or a letter, my rule is we aim for four to five paragraphs, two ambitious words per paragraph, that'll get you the tick and you're done. Now. What is the trick when it comes to learning vocabulary? Because a common question is, sir, what if the word you give me doesn't fit what I'm doing? What if the vocabulary you've given me, I can't make it fit my writing? Fair point. That's a very, very fair point. However, guys, by now you must understand that when I give you something, I've already thought about these things. How do you ensure that the words I give you can be used in every question? Simple guys, the words we are going to use are going to replace basic adjectives. Basic adjectives are words like angry, words like happy, words like sad, words like big and small. These are basic adjectives. These are words that at the age of year 11, we should, guys, even year six, year seven, we should be able to use these words in any context. Any speech, any letter, any article, any story, we should be able to use the word happy, sad, big, small, angry. Because these are generic words that we use all the time. So it's these generic words that we're going to replace with more ambitious words. Alright guys, I'm going to switch over to the board and we're going to go over the 10 ambitious, the 10 big words that you need to learn for this year. Everything education. Tuition for maths. English and science. Speaking about basic adjectives, the first word we're going to begin with is the word happy. We all use the word happy guys. John was feeling very happy. Today was a very happy day. The word we're going to replace happy with is the word exultant. So going forward, I want you all to use this word instead of this word. So rather than saying John felt happy, simply say John felt exultant. Today was the best day of his life. The word exultant, guys, means you are extremely, extremely, extremely happy. It's a nice, easy word to use in your exam to get the mark for ambitious vocabulary. Then we have the word sad. Um, for this one, guys, I'm going to give you two. For the word sad, guys, I want you all to use the word morose or the word melancholy. They both mean the same thing, 
but they are both good pieces of vocabulary to use to replace the word sad. Now, again, the word sad is a very common word. Let's go for our good friend John again. John felt very sad. He couldn't find his phone. John felt morose. John felt melancholy because he couldn't find his phone. You're literally taking that basic adjective and you're replacing it with a more ambitious, better word. The next one, guys, let's go for the word angry. And for this one, guys, we're going to be using the word indignant. Guys, we're going to be using the word indignant. All this means is that. Let's go back to John. John felt very angry because he couldn't find his phone. John felt indignant. He couldn't find his phone. You're simply changing that word with this word and you're elevating your writing as a whole. Then guys, we have the word big. And for big guys, let's go for the word. I'll give you guys two again, guys. Let's go for the word colossal. And let's go for the word gargantuan. So let's go for one of these two. You can choose whichever one you want because they both mean the same thing. They both mean big. So an example, guys, of how you would use these two words is, for example, there was a big block of flats being built outside my house. There was a colossal block of flats. There was a gargantuan block of flats. Now, obviously, guys, these two emphasize how big this thing is. It's massive, but it's a nice, easy way to replace a common adjective, which is the word big. Choose either colossal or gargantuan, or maybe use both. Then, guys, we have the word confused. John felt confused because he couldn't remember where he put his phone. Rather than using confused, guys, use the word befuddled. Our main guy, John, he felt befuddled because he couldn't remember where he put his phone. You're replacing a basic word with a more ambitious, bigger word. Then, guys, we have the word strange. And I want you guys to replace this with a bit of a strange word in itself. And that is the word paradoxical. Paradoxical is when things are happening in like the opposite of how you expect them to happen. So if I said that John's behavior was extremely strange, he was doing things that he doesn't normally do, full stop. You might change it to John's behavior was paradoxical. He was doing things that he doesn't normally do. Guys, do you see what I'm doing? I'm not overcomplicating this. I'm not giving you specific words. I'm not giving you, for example, words that are specific to specific contexts. I'm giving you generic words. And all you do is you replace the purple with the green. Next one, guys, let's go for the word evil. Let's go for the word evil. Macbeth is an extremely evil character. Rather than saying evil, guys, use the word malevolent. Macbeth is a malevolent character. As the play develops, his malevolent side grows stronger and more prominent. Malevolent is a replacement for the word evil. Next one, guys, let's go for the word bad. Now, this is a common word. The word bad is a common word. Today was a bad day. Let's replace the word bad with the word, guys, abominable let's replace the word bad guys with the word abominable abominable guys means when something is really 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 bad Macbeth's behavior is abominable he begins by serving the king only to kill this very man in act two and then guys let's look at the word fed up you're so annoyed you're so fed up you've had enough What's another way of saying fed up? We can replace fed up, guys, with the feeling of exasperated. His teachers were exasperated. They had had enough of his behavior. That's another way of saying the word fed up. Then we have the famous. If your behavior is where you're slouching around, you're lazy, you've got no energy in you, then you're behaving in a very lackadaisical way. 
guys, then you're behaving in a very, very lackadaisical manner. If his behavior, if John's behavior was lackadaisical, he was dragging his feet, he was slouching in his chair, then what you're saying is that the way he's behaving is very lazy, very slow. Lackadaisical, guys, is a lovely word to use and I have used it for years. Guys, when it comes to vocabulary, let's do a quick recap. You've got the word lackadaisical. You've got the word exasperated, abominable, malevolent, paradoxical, befuddled, gargantuan and colossal, indignant, morose and melancholy, and the word exalted. These words are all you need when it comes to your vocabulary. Don't be forever searching for vocabulary. Every month, every couple of weeks, you're looking for new words. Learn these words behind me that I've just given you and then use them in your speech, in your letter, in your article, in your story. Use it in your writing. Every paragraph, you want to use two to three ambitious words. And that's it. You will get the mark for ambitious vocabulary. You will get the mark for big words and you're done. And the beauty of this method is that we are replacing everyday common adjectives. Therefore, it shouldn't be hard for us to use them because we use these words in our writing all the time anyway. All right, guys, it's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.